The software economy is a mess right now and jobs they're hard to find. You may be worried about losing your job right now or you may be actively searching for a new one. Whatever it is, there exists this dormant underlying piece of this whole situation that I think we're neglecting. You see, no longer having the upper hand in this developer economy has forced us into a career desperation. And this desperation has created a strange confusion about what we're even doing. Sending your resume out to anything and everything out there may get you closer to a new job, but in the big picture, is this helpful in the long term? Can you really be a Java developer, a Kate's expert, React master, project manager, and QA tester all at the same time because it's part of your 2024 mass blast of resumes campaign. Now, when you lose a job, you have to take what you can get. This makes sense. I'm not knocking that. But I do think that in this process, you run the risk long term of losing who you really are and what you really want to achieve in your career. And being widely spread like this adds to the fog of your mission of further enjoying the career you used to enjoy. I talked to a guy the other day who just received a new job offer from a company. He has a job, he doesn't need a new one, but is, as we all should be, continually shopping around. We should all be having these regular flings with other jobs. But he's a nuclear engineer, his undergrad was in nuclear engineering, his master's was also related to that, and he's soon to be starting his PhD in, guess what? the same field. In fact, one perk of this new job he's looking at is that it would pay for that PhD. Now his education level or choices aren't what's important here. What's more important is his clarity on who he is and what vocation he wants to be a part of. He's not entertaining anything but what he knows he's called to do. In contrast, we think we can do it all, especially if we're on the job hunt. Again, this is justified in the short term, but looking forward, do you really qualify for all the job listings out there? Say a listing asks for five years of experience in .NET development. You may think you can pick up C Sharp and the .NET ecosystem by the time they call you in to prove it, but do you really have the experience in the trenches that they're looking for. Sure, you have the generalist software developer knowledge, you can figure out problems and find solutions, but let's say they are 10 years deep into a .NET app. Some of it is legacy code, maybe even back to .NET framework, much less core and beyond. They not only want to upgrade to a newer version over time, but they want to improve performance in the code base that really only a developer with years of .NET experience would know the ins and outs about. In addition, maybe the reason for a lot of the imposter syndrome is that we're daily interacting with technology that we either have no experience in or really don't want to be in. Or that's the answer to why we're not really getting the replies to the myriads of jobs we're applying for because we really don't have anything unique to offer other than being a general software developer. So aside from the economy, which will improve as interest rates begin to go down and companies move from hoarding mode to growth mode, in the next few years, what kind of developer do you want to be? And more importantly, what do you want to become an expert in? I recently came across an article by a Dr. Derek Austin titled, How I Discovered the Secret to a Successful Programming Career. It gave me some food for thought about being a career programmer. And he defines that term, career programmer, like this. Instead of being a flexible engineer able to work with JavaScript frameworks and a variety of CSS tools like SAS and LESS, you're going to become a specialist, a high-level expert who only uses certain technologies. You'll choose your own career programming tech stack and become the best in the world at it, or at least good enough to land a successful six-figure programming job. And there are, according to this article, two things that set career programmers apart from other programmers and I think these two statements are extremely powerful. Number one, world-class expertise in certain technologies so that you can deliver production-ready code. And number two, the courage to have a strong opinion about why you prefer those technologies. One issue many of us have as we're claiming to be knowledgeable in everything is that we don't have any strong opinions because we don't live deep enough in that technology to have formed them. For example, when we say Rust is going to completely eliminate the need for C++, I'm probably saying it because I have no substantial experience in C++. Thus, the people that do have substantial experience in C++ and thus strong opinions opinions push back hard on that statement. If you work in JavaScript and Python and front end and back end, it's hard to develop strong opinions on these specific technologies because you're all over the place. And that's why hiring managers may find you boring. They want to hear conviction in what you do. They want your opinions and your strong convictions, not you agreeing to everything. When you're in your stand up and they say, what do you think, Travis? And I'm like, oh, it sounds good to me all the time. Then what good am I really? 
You need constraints in your career so that you don't spread yourself too thin. You don't want to be thin, you want to be fat in a specific area. And this is why this idea of full stack developer is becoming too vast a term. Sure, you can work in React and write CSS and also write APIs and interact with databases, but these two areas are vast and they become more and more inflated by the day in regards to sheer technology. And as I stated in my report, four skills all developers need to have in this AI age, which is a free report, by the way, I'll put a link below. As I stated there, research is now showing as companies begin to ramp up hiring again, that they're being much more selective in seeking specialization. I quote, the current labor market favors developers with specialized skills, particularly in areas like AI and cloud computing. According to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics, software development is one of the fastest growing occupations. However, developers with specialized skills are seeing higher demand and compensation, sometimes reaching million dollar packages. On the other hand, those without specialized skills are experiencing lower salaries and fewer job opportunities. The uncertain economic climate is prompting tech leaders to adopt a more strategic approach to hiring, focusing on specific roles to meet business needs. This selective hiring can lead to a talent bottleneck and an unbalanced developer team. You want to be, as we stated before, number one, a developer with world-class expertise in certain technologies so that you can deliver production ready code. And number two, you want to have the courage to have a strong opinion about why you prefer those technologies. In doing this, you then aren't looking at 500 positions in bulk applying. You're looking for specific areas that you have determined you are interested in. And you're showing up as one capable, opinionated and the best fit for that job. In fact, you may find that your applied to response job ratio numbers may just improve. In this specialization, it actually leads to higher salaries, better job security, meaning it's harder to replace you. And most importantly, you'll actually find a more improved work-life balance because you aren't in a mad dash to learn or keep up with everything all the time. You have your lanes, you're an expert within your lanes, you keep up with news within your lanes, and you leave the rest alone. So let me give you a few tips here on redefining or hitting reset on your coding career such that you can find clarity for the upcoming years and thus joy, opinion, and conviction in what you do. But really quick, before we go over these three tips, a great way to learn new technologies or to fine tune specific skills in only 15 minutes a day is with today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant.org is a great way to learn math, logic, and computer science interactively. Brilliant is fun, practical, and has thousands of lessons from basic to advanced topics from computer science and programming, algorithms, Python, AI, logic, and other tools to help you level up your skills or keep those skills sharp. And it's built for busy people like me and you. Like I said, you can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day. Maybe you want to dive deeper into large language models, neural networks, big data, or just learning the basics of Python, building programs on day one with a built-in drag and drop editor. Today, I started on a new section on probability and how to estimate the probability of events based on limited information we have and how these estimations can change over time, like we see in sports. And like I said, Brilliant can help you solidify those AI, logic, and coding skills and underlying concepts that apply across different fields. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Travis Media or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now back to the video. Okay, so here are my three tips for you. Number one, first seek clarity. Here's an exercise. Pick an early morning, put your phone and your computer away and push away all distractions. Get a notebook, a pen and spend an hour in what Keith Cunningham calls thinking time in his book, The Road Less Stupid. This thinking time is a dedicated, uninterrupted period set aside for deep strategic thinking where you answer one question. By the way, taking time to think while seeming like a waste of time on the surface is essential in our attention culture. Warren Buffett once said, I insist on a lot of time being spent thinking almost every day to just sit and think. That is very uncommon in American business. I read and think. So I do more reading and thinking and make less impulsive decisions than most people in business. This clarity gives you clear direction and keeps you from wasted, muddied efforts. While seeming like a waste of time, it actually helps you prune back all the things that actually waste your time. But you spend this time answering that one question. You mull over it, you jot notes, you rephrase the question, think about it from different angles, and then in the last 15 minutes of that hour, you look at what you wrote and piece together your findings. And here's your question. As a developer, what technology do I most enjoy working in such that I can and want to develop an expertise in it? 
And you're going to consider questions such as, what do I do regularly that I actually hate doing? Do I enjoy front or back end development? What do I find myself reading the most about? What is going to be in demand 10 years from now? What do I have strong opinions on? Why do I not have strong opinions in my job? Who am I as a developer? What did I used to love doing that I no longer do? And you're gonna take notes for 45 minutes and then spend the last 15 minutes piecing together your answer. And this may take several sessions, who knows? But you need, first of all, clarity on who you are as a developer and where you want to go, where you want to be, who you want to be. And there's actually much more to this exercise in the book, like not getting up, not sitting near a window or a computer, and tips on how to come up with the right questions. I'll link it below if you're interested in reading it. Number two, now that you have clarity, how would you answer the question if it were asked to you, what work do you do? Hey Joe, what work do you do? Well, a common answer is, I'm a software developer. But you need to further refine this. I'm a Kubernetes administrator. I'm a .NET consultant. I'm an Apple developer. I'm a systems developer. I'm a Linux expert, and so on. But instead, I'm a full stack, surface level, unopinionated software developer. Give me whatever, and I'll figure it out. That's what many of us would say if we're truthful. So answer this question, what work do you do? If you don't like it, then figure out what you would like your answer to be. Number three, now that you have clarity and can answer specifically what your vocation is, how do you then become the expert in the one sought after throughout your career? Well, now that you don't have to learn everything out there, it's pretty easy. You submerse yourself in that technology, the fundamentals, the history, the best practices, design patterns, scaling, production, safety, and optimization. You learn the content, you fill your portfolio with the technology, and you read news daily around that technology. And in doing so, you become the expert. This is your lane, you own it, people are seeking you out, you have the answers, and you start to form opinions. Follow other experts in this field, get into the discussions, and let your voice be heard. If you found this video helpful and you want some more tips, here are 40 life lessons that I've not only learned from my coding career, but from my now 43 years on this planet. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.